<sighs> Today's video is powered by Bluetti's new power station, but more on that later. So once the Tesla event finished in San Luis Obispo, we had a three and a half hour drive back to LA. We did make one pit stop to supercharge the car in the coastal town of Ventura. This was a supercharger that was located right at the back of this massive shopping mall. It was a little bit of a strange location and it was sweltering hot outside. We went into the mall, but because I didn't have the Tesla app, I couldn't see the progress of the charge. So I had to keep running back to the car to make sure Sure that we weren't getting idle fees or anything like that. We then hit the road again, driving through the Santa Monica Mountains, which is a big national park with heaps of windy roads. And then before you know it, you're out of the hills and back on the beach. So our favorite spot in LA, without a doubt, would have been Beverly Hills, and that was what was so great about having a rental car. It's so good to have a car, and it takes you a few days to get used to the rules and driving on the wrong side of the road, and it's a little bit scary, but once you get past that, you've got this freedom and flexibility of just being able to go wherever you want. And for example, we're now driving through the streets of Beverly Hills, which feels like you're a local going past these incredible homes you could only do that if you had a rental car. And we've been going to more restaurants and more shopping centers that would just be too much of a hassle to pay for an Uber or get the bus. So, you know, renting a car over here has been super cheap for us. It's like 880 Australian dollars for nine days of renting the car. The only other thing to consider though is that you do often have to pay for parking. So add that into the equation, but nonetheless, it's still relatively cheap to rent a car over here. So I would recommend it to everyone. A few other exciting things happened that day. I got to see one of LA's biggest superchargers. It had the solar canopy design, heaps of heaps of charging stalls, and it was just crazy to see something of that size with so many Teslas charging up. I then got a chance to see Optimus for the first time, Tesla's humanoid robot that they're working on, which they've started to display in a lot of the Tesla showrooms over there, which is really cool because it just reminds people very clearly that Tesla is much more than just a car company. And then excitingly, I stumbled across a Lucid showroom, and this was really my first time seeing one up close. They've clearly taken a lot of inspiration from Tesla with the store design and the car itself, but overall, I was really impressed. The interior of the car felt really nice. I loved their approach to having various touchscreens within the car. Everything felt really responsive. The windshield reminded me of the Model X. I really don't like the design of the car from the rear personally, but every other angle, I think it looks amazing. I was also really surprised by the width of the boot. This would be a lot more practical compared to what we had in our previous Model 3. The frunk was also very decent. So yeah, hopefully Lucid don't actually go broke and they can continue to make EVs and hopefully lower their costs a little bit. Okay, let me quickly tell you about this portable power station from Blue Eddy that has 600 watts of power output, is water resistant and dust proof, perfect for camping or going off grid. It also recharges back up surprisingly fast. This was filmed in real time and you can see it ticking up. And as you know, there's no vehicle to load capability in Teslas yet. So this thing is actually pretty perfect to have with you in the car to charge things up on the go like power tools. The display also shows you in real time the power output. This model is the AC60 and has a built-in wireless charger on top with a bunch of USB ports on the side for faster charging of your adventure items like drones and GoPros. It also has a built-in light at the back, which would be so awesome when camping. Anyway, I'll leave my link below if you want to find out more. And thanks to Blue Eddy for sponsoring this video. We then spent the night at our hotel. We were staying at Sonda in Santa Monica, which was fine. It was relatively affordable for what we could find in that area, but we felt it was a really touristy spot and we found ourselves constantly driving back to West Hollywood for food and things to do. So if we had our time again, we would stay in West Hollywood. The black interior has not only um, been really, really hot in the Californian sun, so you get back in the car and the seats are actually burning hot which we've not experienced in the white interior. So there's a plus for anyone debating whether they should get the white interior versus the black. 
We don't love the blue color as much as we thought we would. We definitely prefer having a white Tesla over the blue color option. That's just a personal preference, but it doesn't show up great on camera, which is important for me. Uh, it's always coming across as quite dark. Obviously haven't tested any of the other colors that Tesla offer. I think white would still probably be our top pick. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, our final day in LA, we went straight to the Peterson Museum to check out the Tesla exhibit. And straight away, the Tesla Semi is waiting for you at the entrance. This thing looks amazing in person. It's not as intimidating as a normal truck is. It's more tall and slender, looks super futuristic, and I just love that the seating position is in the center. I mean, they've really rethought the way that a truck is designed from the ground up. And so when you see it in person, it's very evident that this is a totally different approach, but I love it. And then entering the exhibit, the original Model S prototype greets you right at the door. It looks incredible in 2023 still in that cherry red color. The interior feels a little bit dated as expected, but it's amazing to think just how important this car was for Tesla's success. And same with the original Model X prototype, which I also loved seeing. It looked super cute, actually, smaller than what it kind of appears on the road. But again, testament to Franz and the entire design team for how timeless these cars are. They had the original Roadster on display and the new Roadster as well, which looked so stealth. It made me really wonder what this car will actually end up looking like once it's in production, because this particular one on display, whilst it looked incredible, it definitely had that sort of concept car type of vibe. So yeah, super interested to see. Hopefully we get an update on the Roadster in the next year or so. And then the one that stole the show, without a doubt, was finally seeing the Cybertruck in person for the first time. This thing is unreal. It's so different that it takes your brain a moment just to comprehend it. You've got that stainless steel body, the sheer size of the car, Probably the thing that stood out the most was just how wide it was. Certainly can't imagine a car this wide driving on Australian roads. The windshield alone felt like the size of a small car. And I think overall, it just looked really aggressive and mean and tough, much more than I was expecting it to in person. But I think it's like the combination of the sharp angles, the stainless steel design, even just the really thin light strip that you get at the front. So yeah, I don't know that we'll ever get this car in Australia, but in a month or two, we'll know a lot more about the specs and the pricing in the US, so look forward to that. They had information about Tesla Energy there, as well as the supercharging network. There was a dismantled Model Y as well, which was kind of showing off all the parts. They had the full self-driving computer on display. A really nice touch was all the media quotes they had projected on the floor across the exhibit, basically saying that Tesla won't succeed. I mean, overall, the exhibition was really just a one-stop shop for learning all about Tesla and showcasing their story so far. We spent the rest of the day strolling the streets of West Hollywood. We had our last meal at Cafe Gratitude, which was actually one of our best meals of the entire trip. And then one last supercharge before returning the car to Hertz at LAX, where they do ask you to return it with 75% battery or higher. Time to get ready to go back home. And then 20 hours later, we were landing back in Melbourne, back home, finally back in our own Model Y. I did an entire video on battery drain when parking at the airport. If you haven't seen that already, I'll link it below. But yeah, it was super weird being back on the other side of the road again. I don't even know which way to look anymore. Driving on this, like having the steering wheel on this side doesn't feel weird. It's just the turning is weird. It's different.